Weissman, the Jerusalem Post news editor, will now interview Noah Tishbi, an Israeli-American actress, producer, and singer joining us live from Los Angeles. Noah, it's such a pleasure to have you here. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. Of course. I want to jump right into the questions. I mean, you have been one of the uh, biggest proponents of improving Israel's image on every single platform. You're Israeli, you're American, so I guess in some ways that's obvious. But why did this become such an important passion for you? Uh, that's a great question. Uh, the short answer is that I had to, uh, I had to figure it out for myself because at first I wasn't quite sure. Um, my process started growing up in Israel and in, in Tel Aviv in a secular family, a very Zionist family. My mom is from a kibbutz. My dad was in Jerusalem. My, both of them were born in Israel. It was something that was in my uh, bloodstream, kind of like a fish doesn't know that they're in water. So I, I, I was taken to demonstrations. We had politicians in our household. Again, the whole like ethos of the kibbutz and, and Jerusalem and all of that. But it's something that I kind of took for granted. I didn't see it as anything unique. And then I moved to the States, started coming back and forth and, and um, just developing my career, basically. And I started realizing that what seems um, common sense to me was not common sense at all, uh, to begin with Israel's perception in the world. And I was shocked um, by people's reaction. Um, a funny story that happened to me years ago, as, as I just started coming here, we used to hang out with these group of like actors and directors and producers and whatever, everybody young and up and coming. There was one particular girl there who was already well known, but like went on to win every award you can possibly think of. And one time she comes up to me and she, she's like, oh my God, so I heard you're from Israel. I said, yeah, I know. And she's like, so how, how do you, what does your parents think about you? And I was like, I, I don't know. I, I think they're proud. I don't know. They're why? And she's like, you know, that you're modern and everything, that you don't wear the whole head thing. And I was shocked. I was like in my early 20s and I, 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 I couldn't understand how a well-educated American girl thinks this. So it started, it kind of sat in the back of my mind and it kept gnawing at me and like, wait a minute, I, we, we're, it's not what you think at all. And along the years, it just gotten worse and worse. And the turning point for me was the events of the flotilla, um, the uh, mashat to, to Gaza, the, the Turkish, the Turkish um, flotilla. Um, I was on uh, this uh, new and exciting platform at the time called Twitter. And um, I suddenly saw that the word Israel is trending in Turkish. And I already knew at the time that what Israel's situation is in terms of perception, I'm like, oh, this cannot be good. And I started looking into it and realized what was going on. And like, you know, 11, nine peace activists dies and by, by Israeli military and all that. And I'm like, wait a minute, this, is, this cannot be right. And I dove into this. I found myself uh, around that time sitting on my computer, sitting on Twitter for like four days straight getting into Twitter wars with like some crazy people. And I was like, I got, I, something needs to be done about this. And that initiated for me a completely different um, path in life because I realized that that I just can't sit still. Um, through that particular event, we found a group of us uh, that had the same intentionality and the same opinions and the same knowledge and facts found each other and we formed basically the first online um, advocacy and rapid response organization, uh, a pro-Israel advocacy and rapid response organization. We were the first one to identify that Israel has a problem online. It was completely exposed. It was another front line that at the time, um, Israel oh. as a government or, or Israelis were not quite paying attention to it. Fascinating. And uh, that, that changed everything for me. That Great. became a real, a real passion. And what I, to uh, answer your question, what I think had happened at the time was that I didn't even realize that my, like my DNA kicked in and it was stronger than me. Yeah. Like I just kind of jumped into action and started doing these things. And while I'm doing them, I'm like, why are you doing this? And later on throughout the year, I'm like, well, it's just, it was just built in and it right. just had to do That's that. really fascinating. I think it's amazing. And, you know, it's especially interesting because you're positioned in a place uh, that, that's known as Hollywood. And Hollywood, you know, we, there's a lot of stereotypes around it, of course. And one of those stereotypes,
stereotypes is that Hollywood is full of Jews. But at the same time, it seems to be a location nowadays that's a hotbed of anti-Semitism, a hotbed of anti-Israel sentiment, at least. How do you handle that today? So, uh, first of all, yeah, Hollywood is full of Jews. It's, it's, it's okay. It's, you know, there, there are Jews everywhere. It's fine. Everybody can relax. Um, but what about handling the anti-Israel? It's an interesting. It's an interesting time we're living in. So there's the um, external posture, and then there's the internal conversation. Mm -hmm. So the internal conversation goes something like this, right? For people who are Jews or non-Jews, they usually have more of the facts, like how we got to where we're at, and if you have a political issue with this government or another, then you can speak up, but not like don't kind of blanket judge Israel about everything. And it goes something like this. Wow, it's really bad what they're doing to Israel. Wow, I love Israel. It's such an important place. Yeah, but would you stand up for it publicly? No, no, I prefer not to. So there's the the external and the internal um, posture that people in Hollywood, I find, take. Like, I have a lot of people that come to me and literally confess, like, I love Israel. I think it's such a great place. I just don't feel comfortable, like, taking this on. And it's almost as if I think Barry White uh, Barry Weiss uh, is the one to, I, she gave the best description for anti-Semitism that I heard in recent years. So she, her, her description for it is that anti-Semitism is not racism. Anti-Semitism is an ever evolving conspiracy theory. Mm -hmm. And I was like, Spot. like drop the mic, right? That mm -hmm. was incredible because there's something about, um, nobody's overtly anti-Semite in the world right now that we in like normal people other than like the far right that, right. that are but uh you won't walk around saying oh i'm definitely an anti-semite but you have a, a subconscious bias around it so and you kind of like yeah but the jews are x y and z therefore israel is x y and z and this along with the um massive campaign of bds has skewed reality so much that it, it became a thing again. So both um, anti-Semitism, like overtly with like the Corona and everything that's been going on, somebody spray painted in like a mile from my house um, throughout the riots, Jews were coming at you. So and let's, like, let's oh, take that for a minute, Noah. Let's, let's go with that. So there, there is that, but also as we know, <laughs> Um, the modern anti-Semitism had transformed. Now it's like, oh, I'm not an anti-Semite, but I'm an anti-Zionist. And it's like, okay, can you tell me what Zionism is, where it came from? Why do you relate to it as a, you know, what, what, why, why are you against it? They're not quite entirely um, sure on how to describe it. Mm -hmm. So it is definitely a thing again, which is absolutely shocking. And for some reason, people in Hollywood don't feel... Um, I'm generalizing, of course, right? I don't yeah. want to. So, you know, no, I just don't want, I don't mean to cut you off, but we are getting very close to the end of the interview, and I want to make sure that we have a couple of minutes to talk about two other things. Um, so, I'm really yes. going to uh, keep you to 30 seconds on each of these answers. But the first one is I'd love for you to talk. You talked about bringing this group of people together, which I believe is now called Act for Israel. I know that that's changed a little bit in light of Corona, but if you can take 30 seconds and tell us a little bit about that. And in addition, mentioning Corona, um, Corona has really led to a spike or an uptick and anti-Semitism, and I'd love for you to touch a little bit on that as well. So we've got about a minute and a half. Go for it. So in terms of Act for Israel, we were the first organization to do online advocacy and rapid response. So we um, uh, organized online. We uh, started researching and, and did presentation for government officials in Israel. We were the first ones to bring like groups of bloggers to Israel. We were active on, on Twitter and Facebook at the time, and it really made a difference. We briefed a lot of people within the Jewish community, Israeli community, and within Israel about what has been going on. And I feel like because everything had changed now, and Every, it felt like it's such an obvious thing. Um, I feel very proud that we were able to be the first ones to kind of point to that particular um, field. And in terms of anti-Semitism and Corona, I don't even feel like I need to tell you this. It's uh, it's shocking to see the the amount of conspiracy theories about about this. Like the Jews have created this. They created this for in order to create the vaccine. That I mean, it's it's really disheartening that this is still around. It really it really is. And I'm 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 not quite sure what we can do about this other than keep speaking up. I think that people. Um, 
fear what they don't know and they kind of fear like they don't quite know Jews and therefore there's got to be something weird and uh, there isn't. Wow. Okay. Well, I hate to uh, you know end on such a somber note, but uh, it is true that anti-Semitism is on the rise in the era of Corona, and hopefully, with uh, organizations like what you're doing with Act for Israel and the Hasbara component there in Hollywood and around the world, um, that we will be able to make a difference with that. Thank you so much for joining us today, Noah. Thank you.